Welcome to your local news channel, PBS K36BW, with co anchors Ralph Schneider and Cornelius Alfonso. Arts and Culture with Clayton Claiborne. Weather with Amsco Rothschild. And Sports with Nigel Sanchez and Brian Bigby. This is your Broken News. Wait, you want to say something about being April Fools? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> April Fools' Day. Next week on Wednesday. Right now? Are we recording? <laughs> I'm recording. Say it right now. <laughs> I'm recording if you guys want to go. Let's record. Let's see this thing. After they leave. Wow. <clears throat> Are we recording? Nope. I'm little, recording, yeah. When the little red light comes Right now? It, when yeah. the little red light comes on through the camera, it will be recording. It is on. You just can't see it. Wow. Cool. It's definitely not We're on. We're wasting time. I can't see yes, it. Yes, it's definitely on right He there. just turned it on like two seconds ago. It's been on for 36 seconds. Really? 37, 38. All right. Well, well, it's April Fools, so yes, we're wearing glasses. I don't know what you're talking about. Hello, everyone. I'm Ralph Schneider, and I'm Cornelius Alfonso, and it's a great day for Sanders County. Yes, yes, it is. In our first story, fish sorted new heights with the help of the Montana PPL, who have nailed down a contractor to commence construction on the new fish ladder. The fish will be assisted across the dam by a fish ladder that will be built by Cop Construction, a contracting company from Billings. The cost of the ladder construction is estimated at $7 million, which I find just a little steep. Oh, really? Yes. This is why I propose a solution. I'm now in the fish ladder contracting business, and this is the prototype of the new fish ladder. I'll cut the cost for construction in half and have the ladder up and running immediately. That's not a fish ladder. You just bought that from a hardware store. Shoosh! Story. Let things be, Cornelius. You'll soon see that my solution is far superior to all this wasted engineering and professional construction. But... Look, the current contractor won't start construction until July. I can have this up tomorrow. They want to work until November and commence again in the spring. I want to see the fishes use the ladder now. Well, you'll be cutting off a lot of people from their work. Cop promises to provide jobs for local workers. I suppose you'll be naming the ladder after yourself next. Who told you? After months of rehabilitation and bureaucratic entanglements, the remnants of the Camas Prairie horse herd that was saved from thirst and starvation last summer is now awaiting adoption. This newly found trail to freedom seemed like a faraway dream last August when 17 horses were found in the Camas Prairie Ranch by Sanders County Sheriff's Officer Dave Headley, who is in charge of county animal cases. The site upon arrival was one of absolute horror. With no food or water, the 17 horses were clinging for life. Three of the 17 died that day or shortly thereafter. The owner of the ranch was charged with one felony count of aggravation, aggravated cruelty to animals and eight misdemeanor counts of cruelty to animals. He, was, he has failed to appear to court and is now a fugitive. I hope they find this guy, lock him up, and not give him any water. It would serve him right for what he did. For what he allegedly did. Yeah, allegedly. Did he feed and water these horses through the summer or not? Actually. He claims that only one of the horses was his. Oh, so he only tried to starve one horse. Okay, then. One colt had to be euthanized due to a viral infection known as strangles. Since all of the horses had been exposed to the virus, all of them had to be treated. At that time, they were relocated to the Sanders County Fairgrounds, where they all still remain. So wait a tick. Let's go back. This guy didn't appear for court at all. He can get away with this. It's hard to see the silver lining here. Oh, I seriously doubt that he'll get away with it. And anyway, who cares about the guy? Mm -hmm. The horse's will to survive and move on to greener pastures is our silver lining. However, I do believe that horses are colorblind. An open house was held on Saturday at the fairgrounds for locals to get a good look at the herd. This will hopefully lead to adoption for most, if not all, the horses. Organizers of the event are optimistic that the horses, much publicized predicament, will arouse the type of people that these horses will need to get to adjust to a new life. Hopefully, they will find good new homes. Happy trails, horses. Imagine, folks, 180 miles of running. Now there's a good John to shake a leg at. <laughs> I can't help it. You're too funny. 
The Montana Law Enforcement Torch Run is looking for volunteers to assist on the longest leg of the Montana route, our very own Sanders County. The Torch Run is an effort to raise awareness and funds for the upcoming Montana Special Olympics in Bozeman, May 13th through 15th. Here is the game plan, folks. I'll give you the inside scoop. On April 28th at the Montana-Idaho border, runners will assemble at 7 a.m. to begin the run toward Thompson Falls. The torch will then be carried through town by our local Superhawk Special Olympic team. At 8 a.m. in St. Regis, bicyclists will transport the torch from Highway 135 to where it meets with Highway 28. We're looking for around 15 cyclists here, moving the torch five or more miles apiece. Then, the Pony Express will move from Ravalli to Elmo, depending on the turnout. If you are too lazy to run, cycle, or walk for a cause, you can simply donate $10,000, since that's their goal this year. Or, wear blue and hang out along the route in support of the run. Blue is the official color of the Special Olympics. To find out more about our team, contact Holly Headley at 827-1909. To sign up for the Torch Run, contact the Sheriff's Office at 827-3584. Although it has been nearly 20 years since the last one, members of the Plains Volunteer Fire Department say that the last week's Fireman's Ball was a complete success. The ball was held to raise money for the new protection equipment and safety training for the Fire Department members. 100 tickets were sold prior to the event, which include a spaghetti dinner, dance, and live auctions. The event held at the Plains VFW was catered by the wives of the fire crew. Most of the food was donated by McGowan's Market and the use of the kitchen was donated by the VFW Ladies Auxiliary. Auction items were donated from a variety of local businesses and it was emceed by the local auctioneer Jeff Jedlicka. There was also a raffle held for a Winchester rifle. A rifle raffle? A rifle raffle. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yes. After all the numbers were tallied, it seemed that the events had netted the fire department over $5,000. With a surprisingly good outcome, don't be surprised to see this become an annual thing. Let's check out that wild and crazy dude, Amsco Rothschild. See what he's got going on in the weather department for this week. Amsco? Hello Thompson Falls, I'm Amsco Rothschild, the most accurate weather predictor in Montana for at least the last three weeks. It's no secret what keeps me so spot on. No, it's not my history as a used car salesman or my decades of experience as a trial lawyer. It's the feeling I get when I visit my favorite eatery, The Little Bear, owned by Tom and Deb. Their healthy sensations of soup, entrees, fruit and ice cream help my weather predicting glands to stay clear and functioning properly. Visit Tom and Deb at the Little Bear for lunch and you'll see what I'm talking about. In fact, I guarantee that by your fifth meal there, you'll be telling the weather like a champ and saying things like, Monday looks like a high 42 and a low of 32 with a chance of rain and snow. Have their cowboy chili and you might say something like, Tuesday we'll see some rain and a high 44 and a chilly low of 30. Wednesday looks like a hot one, 100 degrees and a low balming minus two. April Fools, I gotcha. It's actually going to be 42 degrees if we're lucky and 43 for a low. Thursday is 46 degrees for a high and 33 degrees for a low. Definitely see some rain. Friday, more rain and a high of 48 and a low of 30. Saturday, we're looking at some rain, excuse me, some sun and a possible high of 49 and a low of 34. And to keep you hanging, I'll only give you one of the numbers in our high and low for Sunday. Five is the number that I'll give you for our high, and three is the number that I'll give you for the low. I bet if you have some ice cream at the Little Bear, you can guess the rest of the numbers. I'm Amscore Rothschild. Back to you, Cornelius.